and welcome to another episode of the Final Percent Podcast, and I have my great friend Brigham with me, and we're going to chat about all things, you know, personal growth, business growth, exploring, we're going to get to know you a little bit. Absolutely. Um, some just some backstory, um, I'm actually sitting in one of his uh, Airbnbs. Yeah. I was, <laughs> I was, I was trapped in a snowstorm. And I'm I'm thinking, you know, where am I gonna stay? And then I was thinking, okay, well, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna get on Airbnb or I'm gonna go on my Hilton uh, app or the Hyatt app or whatever, I'm gonna pay one of these things. Well, I know Brigham has some some units here in town. And I'm like, if I'm gonna give money to anybody, I need to support locally. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? So he um, he's a linguist. Um, if you hung around in TFP at all, you probably. Uh, heard him talk a little bit, but he has some incredible insight into the depth of words, which, you know, I speak for a living, and every time I get around this guy, he's showing me something new and really getting me excited about just communication and how we communicate as human beings. Right. So I just wanted to kind of dive into that a little bit. Tell us a little bit, you know, first off about yourself, you, we, we have a, a baby boy, like my baby boy was born on the same day your baby boy was born on. So November 8th is very special it's to us. It's super special to both of us. Yes. My first baby boy. Yeah. And man, it, we also have Gunther. Yeah, we, and we, Gunther. All three of us, Infinity yeah. Club members. Yeah, Infinity right there. Club members, we've got three of us. So Conrad was born, and I kept making jokes to Gunther because he was supposed to have, um, it was supposed to be like, I think three or four days yeah. earlier. And I'm like... Maybe he holds up. Maybe he's born on Conrad's birthday. And then, uh, so um, he tells me the day before that they're kind of going into it. And then I start getting all these messages from people saying, Brigham's going in. Like, she's, 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 she's on her way to the hospital. I'm like, like, it, like born today? Today. Today? today? <laughs> and so, like, and it was your first boy. Yeah, first boy, fourth child. Fourth pretty, child. Pretty awesome. And what was crazy about that was I was at... Uh, a regional event for yeah, Utah. That's right. I was loving it, having a great time. I was there for two speakers, and then my wife's like, "I'm going to the hospital now." Yeah. And she had preeclampsia, which is like really high blood pressure. So it wasn't even the baby's problem; it was actually a problem with her that she had to go in and get an emergency C-section. No, yeah, really just, crazy. Wow, like nuts. But I'm so grateful that mom's okay, baby's okay. I'll, I'll, so I'll say, you know, I, when I called him the other day, uh, I heard the baby boy in the. In the in the background uh. and it's just it's it's <laughs> funny like when you're not a parent because i was i was that guy i'm out at the dinner i'm hanging out yeah someone's kid goes goes crying why did they <sighs> why did they bring them why did they bring them <laughs> and now here's the hilarious thing i hear those cries and i'm like that's so cute oh that's amazing so it's just funny how like your whole physiology changes right and you know i'm gonna say it for like the 15th time um I, I, I desperately owe uh, Eileen Gallagher a forever apology because she hired me as her coach. Um, and uh, anytime, and when I wasn't a father, mm -hmm. and uh, anytime parenting stuff would come up, I would be like, well, just do this. You know, I've read the books. And yeah, she's just like, do this. <laughs> she's like, Greg, you'll understand when you're a parent. And I'm like, it's not that hard. I mean,. <laughs> I was so wrong. It's so like, but that's, you know, a good coach can admit when they're wrong, right? Right, absolutely. <laughs> but it's it's just having having a, a kiddo. And, and I mean, so how old is yeah. your oldest? My oldest is 10. 10. Yeah, I, I've got three girls and my, my little boy. So Oh, give, give us all the names. Yeah, so I've got uh, Bridget. I, she goes by Gigi. Okay. All right, and she's my 10-year-old. Then I've got Trixie. Okay. And, and she goes by Be she, Beatrice is her name. Okay. And then Bernadette, she goes by Dottie. Okay. And Benjamin just goes by Ben. So all right. All little nicknames as well. So, oh, I love that. That's so, yeah, awesome. Yeah, and, and so, you know, talking a little bit about, I remember you came and did a speech, which I, I'd like you to give a – a little bit of a um, a refresher of this this same speech mm. the 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 bull that breaks and gets Absolutely. put back together because um, it gives a, an insight of not only how powerful words are yeah. but an extended meaning of it but it also gives kind of a glimpse into I mean he teaches people 
Man- Mandarin? Mandarin Chinese. Yeah. Mandarin Chinese. So that's, I mean, think about that. That's it opens up a whole a whole new world. A whole new world. <laughs> See, he's you ready. gotta get it in there. <laughs> he, he, he was ready. He was ready. I you can tell you can tell I I I was up way too late last night because um I, I was hang, I'm hanging out here with the Renatus crew and they said Greg, where do you want to go? And I love wingers it's my favorite uh, it's my favorite restaurant how oh, did we not know that how did, oh man we should oh have gone goodness. together yeah. so yeah. so i they said where do you want to go and i said well if if i can vote we're going to wingers i didn't think they were actually going to go to wingers because i thought you know the the night before we went to like this <laughs> fancy steakhouse or something yeah so we end up in wingers man i crushed like 20 wings and wow. i'm like you know what if i don't go to the gym i'm gonna regret it so where most people are a little tired in the morning because, oh, I stayed out too late. Last- no, I stayed out too late last night because I got a two-hour workout in and nice. the sauna and the uh, and the hot tub. And so uh, that's why I'm a little bit more slow moving. But it's just when you, when, when you, when you, when you pay yourself in wings, you got to go pay yourself in uh, the gym as well to, to balance that decision out because – I just love them. There's, Absolutely. And, and they're just their original sauce. They're, oh, it's amazing. Amazing yeah, it's sauce. It's amazing <laughs> sauce. It's, literally. Just so you guys, if you didn't pick up on that, it's called amazing, amazing sauce. sauce. Like, yes. that's literally what it's called. Um, so I, I, yeah. I can't believe we didn't know that. So that's it's where so we're going funny. first next time. Yes, we're, absolutely. Yeah, we're going to go there. So talk yeah. to us a little yeah, bit your too. love about uh, uh, just the different languages, etymology, no and then problem. specifically that, uh, that conversation or that uh, speech that you kind of put together. Yeah. Helping us understand, you know, the broken parts and yeah, the depth. No problem. I'll, I'll give you a, a, a recap. I won't yeah. do the whole 20-minute version. I'll give you a, a little yeah, tiny recap. Great. Now, uh, if you guys are familiar with uh, the way that Chinese porcelain is put together, uh, there is a a phrase that's called kintsugi in Japanese and jin ju in mm-hmm. Mandarin. If you break a bowl, right, most people are like, oh, man, it's broken. It's ruined. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to throw it away. But what's cool is a lot of these uh, porcelain masters have have over the years taken these broken pieces and put them together with gold. Mm. And instead of having that broken bowl be just what it was and just throw it away, they actually make it into something more beautiful because of the fractures, because of mm-hmm. the splits. And one of the things I think is really beautiful, so that first part is jin, mm-hmm. uh, that's gold, and then uh, ju is to continue. Mm. So you continued that opportunity to use that bowl because you actually re-put it back together. Mm. That's really unique, isn't so it? Good. Because so good. Uh, it's not just about what happens to you, because honestly, that bowl, it broke. Mm-hmm. It, it's going to stay broken unless you do something about it. Now, we, so we have so many things in our life that's like that. Yeah. Uh, I had an experience. I actually shared this with a handful of people. My brother, uh, Bradley, passed away. Mm. And... I found out about it while I was uh, giving the ACT. And I think of this forever as the act now instead of just the ACT because I was taken out of, of that that uh, that room. My my wife was there. I was like, why are, why are you here? What's going on? And she said, Bradley passed away. And I was like, whoa, whoa, what? that's that's crazy. What, why? What happened? And uh, she said he took his own life. And we went immediately to my family and we started learning a little bit more. And um, Sometimes we don't know the storm behind the knife. We don't know the, the storm behind what's, what's going on in people's backgrounds and what, what they're really struggling with. My brother struggled with schizophrenia. Mm. And that mental disease took him from where he was. He was a brilliant musician. He would actually mm. love his music. It was really fun. And he, because of that disease, it just took him down a path where he eventually felt like he was better not being here. Uh-oh. It was just, it was tragic. And I felt broken for a very long time. And I was angry. I was angry with him. I was sad. And that he had so many mixed emotions. But I literally felt fractured. Mm. And my relationship with my family has also felt fractured. And one of the things that has helped me, uh, I know we're not going to get super religious in this, but it was how Christ has helped me be able mm. to be that glue. Mm-hmm. To be able to say, you know what, whatever's happened in my life, I can come back together mm. if I'm willing to do the hard work of actually processing it and dealing with it. Because there is a, a grief process you have to go through. And there's, there's a challenge that happens anytime uh, something difficult happens to you. You could feel broken, 
But what's cool about us as humans is we don't have to stay broken. Mm -hmm. And just because we had a moment where, where our life fell apart, it's what we do with those moments that allows us to have the change and allows us to be rebuilt. And honestly, when we get rebuilt, we get put back together. We are more perfect than we were before. Oh, 100%. And yeah. uh, there's, there's this word in Chinese, wan mei, and wan cheng, it means perfection, right? Wan is complete, right? And that's the difference in English. In English, we think perfection, oh, that is something that is lacking in perfection. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have any faults. However, what, what the Chinese meaning behind that is, is it is complete. It is like a circle. It's that final percent. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't go that final percent, right, you have a program that's loaded 99%, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. So if we're willing to actually let ourselves heal and go through that whole process and deal with the challenges as they come, mm -hmm. then we can glue ourselves back together. And Honestly, I did not do it by myself. It took years oh, yeah. and it took a lot of conversations, but what's cool is we can. Yeah. And I, I love that. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to share a little Yeah, bit. absolutely. And I think, I think that that's, you know, going back to the, the circle um, idea, a lot of times people, when they, they don't realize that the real, they're, I, I've said multiple times, you're one conversation away from changing your whole life. Mm -hmm. And, and the thing is, um, what do conversations lead to? They lead to relationships. Oh. And relationships really just, they, it's, they, they take your life to an entirely new level. Mm. And one of the things that I, I certainly realized is, you know, I was a cre you know, a lot of people think that I'm a creature of action, but I, I actually was a creature of action much more when I moved to Denver, Colorado. And I'm, yeah. you know, got this idea that the first person that I heard this from was Zig Ziglar. He said, you have to be before you can do, you have to do before you can have. And I said, well, that's interesting. And I took a little switch on it and I said, you know, B plus do equals have. Here's what I found about it is when I first started and I was in Colorado, I was so focused on the action. Yeah. And, but I was a person trying to do things that I was not yet. So it was kind of the epitome of fake it till you make it. Yeah. So then I said, okay, well, I'm just going to read and I'm going to become the person. And what I realized is I actually hid there for way longer than I, I, I wanted to, should have. And I was just in a constant state of becoming. So I actually pulled way back on the action and I was always, it was almost like I, you know, I went on this sabbatical and I was just doing this like philosopher's journey. Okay. And, and so that's why actually, you know, as recent as, you know, our, like when Kayla and I are planning our 2024, we said, you know, this is our year of doing, mm -hmm. we've become incredible marriage. We've become incredible speakers and we've done a lot of things to become these people, but now it's time to go put it into, into action. And so I think that we have to remember that life is cyclical yeah. and it, it kind of like how I, I use the infinity model, but it's just, you, you become more so that you can achieve more. And then when you achieve more, you become more. And so I was kind of banging off the ceiling because I mean, I'm at like 1400 books and it's just like, what more do I need to become to like take my next big action? And and, you know, really kind of diving into all of these things for me is going back to that idea of perfection is I thought I thought that, OK, well, I have to be perfect before I take the action or I have to control as many variables so that I don't get hurt. Yeah. Um, and so all these things I'm becoming, you know, more, you know, adept at uh, going against the storm and all of these different things. And then you know, I just realized that, like, it's, it's time to take action yeah. and it's easier to take action. And this, you know, no pun intended, I'm going to bring everything full circle. Um, it's easier to take action when you have a support system yes. and the best support system you can have is people around you that you feel, and this is so lost in today's day and age. 
where you can be honest, where you can say, hey, I'm struggling. And I mean, there's there's been times where like, and it, when I think the final percent took an, a, a step forward is when I finally started getting honest with mm-hmm. people saying, hey, we're creating these wonderful courses and just so you know, like we feel bad when you don't take them. Do you want us to, to make them? Because people don't realize as creators that like the course isn't a cash grab. I mean, all of, all of our courses are just included in our total membership. So mm-hmm. there's no extra money. And when I started being honest with people saying, hey, these, this isn't just a course to make money. This is, this is from my perspective, it's much more of a work of art. And art wants to be appreciated. And the artist doesn't want to be appreciated. The artist wants the art to be appreciated. So I, and what I realize is we live in the culture where everyone's like, oh, awesome, you great, great course. Like we'll announce it, but then I'll go look in our metrics and that person's never even logged in. And I'm like, why are you congratulating me? Like I, I, want, I, I want it to change your life. I desperately want people to get equipped, but they, couldn't know how I felt because we're all playing these characters. Mm. Um, actually, like after this, I, I want you to share the thing that you uh, were talking about uh, in in the car where you talk about the the stage. Sure, um, absolutely. But we, we we have these characters, and I was supposed to be the guy that's always on. Mm. I'm supposed to be the guy that doesn't care. I'm supposed to be the guy that doesn't even know if people are, are looking at the things. Like Brigham was one of the very first people to log into the app and then get a little badge that showed like, watched all videos and completed this thing and he yeah. sent it to me. That meant more to me than anything. That like people were finding value and moving forward through it. A lot of people don't even realize the values in there because they can't be bothered. And yeah. So you, you, look at, you look at it, we live in a culture where when people try to help people out, people are thinking it's weird. And I'm just like, we need to get into these places where we can be honest and say, I need help. Mm-hmm. I always tell people, leadership isn't about someone coming in and saying, you need to do this. Leadership is about raising your hand and saying, I can help in these areas. But most people, after the leader raises their hand and says, I can help in these areas, most people don't want to admit they need help. And Because it's hard. It's, it's really hard to say, you know what? I'm struggling. I'm, I'm failing X, Y, or Z. Yeah. But, but here's the yeah, thing that I think, here's the thing that I think everyone needs to, to, to understand. There's no such thing as gurus. Anybody can help anybody at something. Yeah. Like my greatest mentor to date that I, and I honestly think is my son. He's two. He teaches me more about (laughs) myself than I have ever had anyone teach me. I've learned from you. I've learned from my wife. I learned from my mom. I learned from strangers on the street. There's so true. You have to have that open mentality to where you're, you're learning and you can effectively communicate and have that, that circle keep going. You know, there's an expression in Chinese that is literally thousands of years old that is exactly that. San Ren Xing, Bi Yo Wo Shi Yin. If you're walking with three people, right, you're one of those three people, you can learn from either one of them. Oh, yeah. And it's that perspective that if you are willing and you have that open hand like you talk about in your courses, yeah. you have an open hand saying, hey, I am willing to accept whatever it is that you have for me, yeah. and I'm willing to also give. Yeah, there's there's an exchange there when whenever you're willing to be, be open to, yeah. to being coachable. But yeah. If you're not if you're not coachable, you have that those clutched fists. You're yep. like, oh, I'm not willing to accept help from anybody. Then you won't be able to progress. Yeah. yeah. You know what I think is interesting. So say that phrase again. The the three. San Ren Xing, Bi Yo Wo Shi Yan. Okay. So he said that, and then this is the depth when he, and you said how many years old. It's, it's over a thousand years old. Okay, so it's over a thousand years old. To put it to pr- perspective, why I love talking to you is you have this depth of words. So he says this. This it's Chinese. Yeah, it's he a, says this Chinese phrase. expression. And then look at how many English words he needed to use <laughs> to help you yeah, understand right. this this <laughs> phrase. And and I think that that's something that we miss 
as being a relatively young culture in America, we miss the depth of of possibilities mm. um, in your life, in your marriage, in your friendships. And if just something as simple as, and what was the phrase, the, the elephant phrase you were telling me yesterday? Oh, <laughs> we were talking about, this is actually probably longer than a thousand years old. Okay. So it's, uh, <clears throat> oh, I just blanked in one second. It's mangran mo xiang. So mangran are blind people, mo is touching xiang, the elephant. Okay. And the idea behind that, because this, this is actually a, a big story, but this idea that all these people, they have their own perspective and their own tangible reality. They're touching the tail, they're like, oh no, the, the elephant's like a rope. They're like, no, the t elephant's like a tree trunk. They're like, no, the elephant is like a snake. Yeah. They're like, everyone's perspective is 100% accurate. Yeah. However, it is incomplete. Yeah. And because they they needed to come together and they need to talk with each other and say, oh, this is also my experience. It's, it's kind of like business or anything mm -hmm. in life. Yeah. That if you only have one perspective, your own perspective, it is limited. Yeah. Yeah. And your own culture is limited. Your own beliefs are limited. All beliefs are limited. Yeah. However, if you're willing to say, you know, I, I'm curious why you you think it's like a snake, or I'm curious yeah. why you think it's like a a stump. Eventually, you can get the entire picture because yeah. if if it's truth, it's truth. Yeah. If it's not truth, then then it's not. There's another expression. You ready for this one? Yeah. This is one of my favorites. I use this as a missionary. Uh, it was Shurji Hali Chajur Chenling. So the difference of a hair can be thousands of miles. If you go un like you if you have a decision, and it doesn't oh. if it's incorrect and it goes off, you can be extremely far off. It's okay. not just like a little bit off. Yeah. A tiny little decision that is slightly off. Maybe you're like you know what. I'm gonna go check out some pornography. Yeah. You're like, oh, slightly off, and then you stay on that path and you don't course correct. You're you're gonna end up in, like, I don't know, Bangladesh. <laughs> so I I have my own way of of telling people this. I say, um, you have to you have to behave like basically when I'm talking to people uh -huh. when I first talk to them they're they feel a little bit like a, a, a stick of dynamite okay. or a bazooka or an RPG, uh -huh. and I said, what I need you to do is I need you to be a little bit more like a sniper. Uh, so when you have this, precise. But, but here's the thing, if you don't understand how the wind is affecting, if you sneeze when you're shooting, instead of hitting your target, you hit a baby. Because if you're trying to hit something two miles away, and you're off by one degree, you're missing by a football field. Like you're, you're really, you're really messing up like big time. Yeah. And so I, I love that. Another thing that I used to use all the time is when you get together with people, and this is why I think it's important. I love what Bob's been saying on the, at this conference. He mm -hmm. said, it's not, it's not the five people that you spend the most time with. It's not, it's not the whole who you know thing. It's who do you call your friends? friends like specifically like who are your friends that's that's your future not oh it's who you know it's like is that person a friend like because a friend can affect you in a completely different way yeah. and so I started my uh, my company early on and we were struggling I mean I want to say that our bills which is laughable now but our bills were probably like somewhere in the neighborhood of one to two thousand dollars a month, which I don't even know. Like I can't fathom one to two thousand dollars a month being what I need to make now because, <laughs> right. like, that's like it's probably what I spend in energy drinks. Like I mean, <laughs> it's just it's crazy. Um, but what happened is I started the company. I brought on this guy. I started teaching him a bunch, and we started drifting apart. And I couldn't figure out why. But what I did is uh, I went to Barnes and Noble every single day. Mm -hmm. And I read, and, and he would come with me every now and then, but I'd read and I'd read and I'd read and I'd read and I'd read. Um, the person who would come with me would be Kayla. Mm -hmm. And she wouldn't sit there and wait for me to read, and she wouldn't read like random like fashion magazines or whatever. She would read business books and, and, and do everything herself. And so we were developing our own language and philosophy. We were becoming. Mm -hmm. And he wouldn't. And then I found this this uh, thing, a, a tapes, 
uh, tapes, uh, CDs, not quite tapes, but CDs. Some people uh, don't even know those. I know, right? <laughs> so uh, Zig Ziglar, man, I wore those things out. Oh, I mean, man. I listened to Zig Ziglar like there's no tomorrow. Then I found Jim Rohn. Love Jim Rohn. Jim Rohn's oh, the, he's he's the, the goat man. for me. He's, yeah. he's the greatest of all time. I love him. And so then I wore those things out. And so I had these CDs, but I, I didn't have enough, like I didn't have Audible or anything like that. So I just... Right when the last CD was in, I had, there was like a thing of seven. I would take it out, like go right back to one. And then every time I'd get, and this is back when like the CD box sets were like 200 bucks. Yeah. You know, it's not, it's not like you're buying a CD at the store. And then I would do that. But here's what happened. Going back to what you just said, the difference mm-hmm. of a hair being a thousand miles, the sniper philosophy. What happened is he wanted to hang out and and party and you know do the the drinking and you know didn't really have time for personal development and so we kept going down these paths and then four years later we looked up and i I have all this personal growth and i'm literally speaking a different language than him and and we would get into these fights all the time now who's right and who's wrong that doesn't matter because maybe that was what he wanted to do and he just Mm -hmm. didn't want to do this But I love what uh, Zig Ziglar says. He says, saying that you don't have time for personal growth is a little bit like saying you're too busy driving to stop for gas. (laughs) That's a great expression. Isn't that the truth? Yeah. And and that's the thing is you (laughs) want to really look at the language that people use. And that's Mm -hmm. why, you know, I've always been so attracted to you because when we would, not only are we both musicians, um, we we got to really know each other in in Costa Rica because, I mean, we we brought down the house multiple times oh, it was so in Costa Rica. <laughs> people were not ready. They were just like, are these people hired? Like, what? What? how did this happen? <laughs> um, but regardless of what is happening in your life, you mm-hmm. have such an incredible way to remain positive. Thank you. And, and you know, obviously we don't need to get into details. You're, you're just like every other person, especially if you have four kids and you're running yeah. a business. You're you got problems just like anybody else. Everybody does. What is one of your big things on how you stay positive? Now, I wasn't going to get religious, but literally that's the key for me. Uh, so every day I, I pray. The first thing I get up, I, I, I pray. You know, some people, they like to, to meditate, but for me, I, I want to make sure my mind is right. Yeah. And I think I was given another day. Yeah. Like I've heard this from so many different influencers, but I, I heard it first from God. Yeah. that we need to be grateful for every single moment, every wow. breath that we take, the heartbeats that we share. Yeah. Every single time that we have an opportunity to uh, to wake up, yeah. that's a gift. You think about it, would you trade your life for $100 million no. if tomorrow you didn't get to wake up? No. There's no way. No. So every single day we have a amazing gift mm-hmm. that we can grow again, that we can make a positive impact in the world. And that that's one of the reasons why I, I choose to pray first yeah and then I do other things in my day uh, the other thing that helps me stay positive is uh, when when I get to joke around and have have fun with other people specifically yeah. my kids I, yeah. I really like to, to play with my kids and I think some people lose lose the fire of being able to just have fun with their kids yeah and have fun with their friends yeah because I I do see this pattern in myself at times when I'm not having fun with my kids. I'm not having fun in any other part of my life. Yeah, yeah. But if I'm willing enough, you know, willing to go play and and silly. wrestle with my kids yeah, and yeah. be silly and tickle them and stuff, yeah. throw them in the air and dance with them. Like I did Zumba the other day. Like two days ago, I just 15, 20 minute Zumba session with my little my little kids and my three year old dancing Zumba. There's that's pure joy. Oh like, yeah. You see a three year old doing Zumba, not even close to the on beat and yeah. like missing every move, yeah. but loving every second of it. It's so cute. That's the thing that I like, I think Conrad's been really good for me is I like, I'll just watch him and he'll like, he'll, he'll ask for like, like the really s- simplest things. Like the other day yeah. he, uh, he brought me a, a balloon mm-hmm. and it wasn't opened or anything like that. And, He's trying to blow it up, and he just doesn't understand how that works yet. Mm-hmm. So there's basically just dripping spit all like, over this just balloon. coming off. <laughs> and he just looks at me, and he goes, help me. Oh, and, okay. and I'm, like, looking at all this drool, and I'm like, sure. So I grab it, and I, like, kind of, like, Wipe get it the, off a little. And I, like, blow it up, and I tie it, and I give him a balloon. And 
the amount of actual joy that comes out of that kid off of a balloon was just astonishing. And I was thinking, what would have to happen in my life to bring me that much joy? Mm. And I couldn't name it. The only things that came up were time with Kayla, time with Conrad. That's the only, like, the only things that would come close. And, and usually the amount of joy that would come from me is probably watching Kayla or Conrad have joy. And so, again, it's this cyclical nature. It's mm. the reciprocity. And I was just thinking to myself, just like, always stop and blow up the balloon. Yeah. Always stop and... When you're, when you're kid, like, I can't tell you how many times, because I work from home, I'll be walking up to my office, and I'll just, I'll, I'll hear this, Daddy, Daddy, I'll go, yes, buddy, and I just, I just been down there, and I asked for a hug, he would not give me a hug, and we're very much like, we're not like the, I'm gonna hug you anyway, just because I'm way bigger, it's just like, if he doesn't want a hug, I'm not gonna hug him, so I went up there, and of course, Daddy, hug so I'll go back down of course I'll go back down so it's those moments where it's like instead of instead of going oh well no you missed mm. your chance he doesn't understand him like you're not teaching him any lesson if yeah. I don't go back down and hug and those are the moments that when he's off to college and all those moments that I'm gonna wish I would have always hugged yeah. and that's why like if you have someone that really means something to you pick up the phone Send the text message. Say the thank you. And I think joy is such an interesting emotion. And the way that I teach it, I think joy is the only exponential emotion. Mm -hmm. I think pleasure, which is external, and we still need, just to be very clear, I'm not saying that I'm a monk and uh, you can't have any pleasure. Like, have pleasure. Like, yeah. like music is is pleasure. Dancing is pleasure. Like, it's fine happiness is internal so pleasure external happiness is internal mm. and i think that but but i think with happiness and i think with 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 pleasure i think it's kind of like a cup it can only get so full but when both of them fill up at the same time and they both get full at the same time then you reach joy and then it's exponential joy can get as big as you want that's why i think the Bible talks about it so much. That's why it's yeah. such an important word because I think it's the only exponential emotion that we have. Pleasure is fine. Happiness is fine. But when they collide, you get joy. Yeah. And that's why like, you have this new little being like in, 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 in <laughs> my case with a balloon. Like there's, he's seeing the balloon. He's hanging out with daddy. Watch this thing happen. He gets the balloon. He can he's throw like, it, up. it up. Yeah, keep it off the <laughs> ground. Keep the uppy. Um, and all these things happen. And then all of a sudden you're watching joy and then there's some about joy that's so infectious it, and then joy happens to me mm -hmm. and then joy happens to the rest of my clients that I'm talking to and joy happens to my wife and I mean if you guys go back and look go back and look at when Brigham was talking about uh, Zumba with his kiddo or the wrestling that's with his so kiddo. Fun. Oh my gosh. He's, and he's, <laughs> he's fired up and you can see him change yeah. you can see it and it gets infectious. Like some, someone out there who's watching this right now is smiling. Or you press pause and you ran and wrestled with your kid. Because I hope you do that. Because <laughs> the, 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 joy, the joy is infectious. That's what this is all about. And, and the thing is, is it can be in everything. It can be mm -hmm. in, you know, business, on helping people. You know, both you and I mm -hmm. help people, you know, get educated in in uh, in different areas of real estate. Well, actually, any area that you want, um, and you can choose your own yeah. own path. Like we're sitting in an Airbnb, yeah. and it was just an idea one day. I'm gonna go rent an apartment. I'm gonna furnish it. By the way, he does not skimp on the mattresses. It's I don't. A, it's a purple <laughs> mattress, and like I, you can you can you, you can call Kayla. And I'm like, babe, we are buying a purple mattress. Like, I am so <laughs> digging this thing. It's um, so comfy. It's oh so my gosh. comfortable. Um, but that's the other thing is, like, that tells a lot about who you are. And, and going back to, you know, my company, The Final Percent, it's like, it's pretty obvious that not only did you go The Final Percent for me yeah. in getting me in here, but it's like me just watching how you set this place up. Like, you're a Final Percent kind of person. Yeah. And it's just, it's really interesting how... People want to take the fun out of business because there's a lot of people who are like, 
I got to go to the Salvation Army, get the cheapest mattress. And <laughs> there are people it, like that. Yeah, there are people like that. But you're just like, how can you care about the experience? So t- talk to me a little bit about just the experience of you in real estate, of of w- like you building mm. your your brand as sure. a as a person and someone who helps people with real estate, who does real estate. Mm. Talk a little bit about your properties and kind of your why behind it all. Absolutely. So before I get there, I actually yeah. I had a, a thought about joy. I okay, like, yes, I'm gonna tie please, it in please. because it was I like, oh, it's so good. You're, I love it. I you're love so it. good. Um, one of the the ideas that that popped into me is that men are that they might have joy. This is a scripture I shared over and over and over in in Second Nephi. And uh, if if we are if we are human beings because of the purpose of having joy, yeah, then we can tap into something that is amazing. Oh yeah. And one of the things I love about real estate is when you are able to help somebody like, like yourself, you're in a, in a bind, you're like, Hey, I need a place to stay. And you provide a service that is really top notch yeah. quality. I'm proud. I'm really proud of the way that this place turned out. Oh yeah. Right. It and it's, be. it's something that I, I feel is a part of my expression of creativity as well. Yeah. And one of the things that, that sticks out to me with, with real estate, when I first got started, I, I was a teacher, I was teaching Mandarin Chinese and theater in high school, really enjoyed that, but I did not have a vehicle like real estate. If I wanted to earn more money, if I wanted to earn an extra two or $300 a month, you know what I had to do? Mm. I had to go do a lot more hours. I had to yeah. do like six to eight more hours a week. Yeah. That's away from my family and that's like barely like minimum wage style yeah. earning more income. And I was like, this is not the vehicle that I want to stay in. Yeah. So when I saw real estate, I was like, I believe in this vehicle. Yeah. It's something that people have not only made money recently, it's not a fad. Yeah. They've been making money at real estate for ever. Thousands of years. Since it was invented, since you could buy dirt. Yeah. yeah. You're like, I can buy dirt. Yes. We can make money doing this. Yes, exactly. Okay. And because of that, I was like, I believe in the vehicle and I just needed to be around a new group of friends. Yeah. And I was always surrounding myself with with teachers that were very creative and and positive and they're awesome in their realm of education but almost all of them were about as lack of abundance as possible mm. scarcity minded in almost everything with with finances yeah. because whenever you talked about money it was just like walls went up you're like hey i can't do x y or z because yeah, it's like i you're can't not allowed, afford it yeah well and yeah. it's also like you're not allowed to talk about money yeah, it's like it was yeah. so taboo with yeah. almost all of my friends there. I was like, I really need a new di- like a new group of friends. Yeah. And if I share my goal of making like $333,000 this year yeah. with someone because I want to provide value and services in multiple ways yeah. to people, like I don't want people to be like, oh, yeah. you're, you're a jerk for wanting to go go be successful in your business to, for, for wanting to go and serve. I, I want to help at least 33 people this year go and change their life. And yeah. if you help someone get what they want, you, you, this is something from Jim Rohn as well. If you yeah. help enough people get what they want, you can have anything that you want. Yeah, exactly. And with, with real estate, I feel like when I started four years ago, I didn't have the mindset, skill set, or tool set to do this. Yeah. And when I, when I was willing to dive into the courses that uh, that we both have been been uh, diving into with Renatus, and opened up my mind to what was possible. Yeah, I had to create that possibility for myself. Exactly. So for a long time, I didn't I didn't believe it, even yeah. though I knew that it worked for other people. Yeah. And that was something that I still sometimes I feel like, man, do I deserve those things? Yeah. And I get stuck in that deserving world. Well, and I think a lot of people they they don't think they're. I know I struggled with this for a long time, so. Yeah. I grew up so poor, I just, it was almost like everything that's happening to me uh-huh. was an accident. Yeah. Like, I'm like, I don't deserve this. I'm supposed to be poor. Mm. I'm supposed to struggle. I'm supposed to wonder where the next meal's coming from. I'm, th- I'm, that's my identity. Until one day, like, I had to ask myself, why? Why is that my identity? Why am I... Like, why am I fighting so hard? Because a lot of people, a lot of people get into that mode, and I certainly did. And sometimes I go back to it because, you know, like, we're all a work in progress. I love what Kayla says. She says, you can be a masterpiece and a work in progress at the same time. Yeah. And 
I I had to go, you know, why am I fighting so hard instead of planning so big? Instead of, you know, building in a new direction. In, in using much more constructive words. And I think that's why you got to pay attention to the language mm. that people use. It's like, when, so when people are like, oh man, I'm just on the grind. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to hang out with you. Oh man, I'm just, just fighting through the day. You know, I've, I've done that. I know that mindset. But it's just like, Oh, I'm just working on building my dreams. Oh, I'm interested in that. What are you working on? I'm, I'm interested. Let's have that conversation. And I think people need to be really, and one of the things I tell people all the time when I'm working with them is I say, how you talk to you is way more important than how I talk to you. Yeah. And if you only talk to you good, if you've just talked to me, I'm turning into a crutch. I can't, mm. I can't be a, a, a coach and a crutch are two different things. Very different. And one of the things that I'm, I'm here to tell everyone is, is you know, we both really believe in, in this company called Renatus. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm actually in Salt Lake to hang out with and, and work on an event with them. That's what I'm doing here. Um, and one of the things that I'm finding, and people do it with Renatus, they do it with me, they do it mm -hmm. with the Infinity Club. They think that once they pay, that it's a transaction and not an opportunity. So everyone's coming from a consumer mindset. They're coming from, hey, I'm coming from a consumer mindset. Yeah. What they need to do is come from a student mindset. So if you buy, if you buy, you know, coaching from me, you got to show up and then you got to do the work. If you buy education from Renatus, you got to show up and you got to do the work. If you go to the gym, you got to move those weights. No, yeah. you, you hiring the trainer and buying the membership doesn't lift the weights for you. And so many people are sitting there, and here's what I've, I've, I've found out. People spend all of the money to absolve them of responsibility. It's not an accountability, buddy. Wow. They want someone to blame that it didn't work. So if you spend 20 grand with Renatus, or you know, 30, 40 grand with me, or you go to college, or you go to the car dealership, you spend all the money and then you immediately can tell everyone that it's someone else's fault. Mm. And that's the thing that I learned is like, if, if I buy the coaching, cause I, I've spent, oh my goodness, have I spent money on coaching. <laughs> um, some good, some not good. I'm not gonna name the not good ones. Um, but uh, I remember specifically, in, and here's why I don't ever, I don't like holding people um, hostage with what I call the social media gun. I'm going to uh -huh. give you a bad review. Why? You know, I, I just recently was at a gym and they kept charging my card even though I canceled it. And um, one of the big things that they were scared of when I called and I'm like, you need to refund this money and you need to stop charging my card. And the biggest thing that she kept saying was, please don't leave a bad review. I'm like, I'm not going to leave a bad review. I don't care. I really don't care. I, I just make it stop but there's no reason for me to try to hurt your business let's just solve the problem and what people do is they mm. buy things and then they they immediately say okay well it's not my fault my, it's my coach's fault i haven't been able to discern because there's one specific instance you know i spent 75 grand getting some coaching mm -hmm. and for a little bit i did you know, I was kind of mad and I got, I did talk crap about the, the fact that I spent coaching, but then I asked myself, did I actually do the work? Did I actually dive in? Did I actually make the connections in the group or was I sitting there disgruntled and then it became a self-fulfilling prophecy mm -hmm. because I was sitting there going, why did I spend so much money on this? So then I get into a bad attitude. No one wants to talk to me. I don't talk to anybody and then nothing happens. But because I spent money, I can say, that person took money from me. Did they? Or did they do exactly what they said and then I didn't do what I said? You know, and there's a case to be made on both sides. So I just said, you know, why would I even put negativity out there? And then when it started happening to me and, 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 and started happening to the colleges that I had, and, you know, I've seen, I've seen some interesting things where people with, with Renatus are like, oh, you can get everything, uh, you can get everything on, uh, on YouTube. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, okay, maybe okay. that's true, but how do you know what to watch? Cause I guarantee you, if you try to find the cogent thought of everything in just velocity banking, you're going to end up on a cat video. 
hundred percent. You're gonna end up not watching. just one. You get cat video, dog video, you'll, <laughs> yeah. and then you'd be like, "Why am I watching? Yeah, what, how what did am I, I get doing here? Yeah, how did I get here?" And so the the thing is, is I love what Tony Robbins says. He says, "In the world where we are drowning in information, we're starving for wisdom, mm. and wisdom is a proven thought line, a proven way of doing things, with proven people, proven methodology, in a cogent." Uh, and disseminable or uh, like you can disseminate the uh, the information appropriately so that people can learn yeah. and they know there's a step there's a process there's a system so that people can mm. get stuff done so sure maybe you can find it all on YouTube but you're going to spend the rest of your life figuring out what pieces go together if you ever actually get it accomplished right. so everything what I say is when you spend money it should be an accelerant so it's either you're either doing something with someone or you are getting something done for you and what Renatus does for you is it puts it in a very succinct way a cogent mm -hmm. manner with proven practitioners who know what they're doing yeah. and with a CEO Bob Snyder who cares more than anybody that I've ever met right. like this guy is the real deal and so yeah I'll pay for that I'll pay to make sure that the knowledge and the people are vetted. Hmm. I'll pay to make sure that it's in a, like a contiguous way so that I know this video goes with this video goes with this video instead of, okay, I watched part one, where's part two? We don't even know if the person made part two. And it's just, everyone's just like, ah, it's free information. Well, is it updated? Do they, do they stay up to date on the laws? Do they, like, they're constantly re-recording uh, information and it's just something where I'm just like how does everyone not know the value of it it's because people and that's why they don't do the work on YouTube because there's nobody to blame but themselves mm. so they don't watch the videos but then here if they pay the money and they don't watch the videos at least there's someone to blame ah I didn't like it or this that and the other or someone told me this it's just like do the work can I share an idea really Please, quick? this I, is something that I learned as a teacher okay. that is a myth with learning. A lot of people think, oh, I can only learn in this modality. I'm, I'm yeah. an auditory learner or I am a visual learner. Mm -hmm. It is simply not true. Yeah. Every single one of us can learn in any modality, whether we see it, whether we smell it, whether we taste it, however it is yeah. that we experience life. And when, when we think about uh, taking 100% full responsibility, It comes down to pride. Oh yeah. And if if we are are filled with that avarice and pride, we're not willing to take responsibility and say, This is where I'm at because this is my responsibility and what I have done with my life. Mm -hmm. Every choice leading up from everything I've ever done is has led me to this moment. Every single thing that I've ever done in my past has led me to sitting on this couch with you. Yeah. You know, I'll, one thing that I really kicked my butt into high gear when I found myself procrastinating, yeah. um, there's, this, there's this story, I won't get into the story because quite frankly, I'm a little tired and it, and it requires me to yell in the story and we're also in an apartment, so I don't want to scare people. Um, but it's the, it's the one with, uh, uh, I think it's Henry Kissinger or maybe it's Winston Churchill. It's, it's one of those guys and he talks about a, an aide and uh, you know, going back and forth and it talks about, was this your best work? Mm, yeah, and, uh, and it's a really famous story. So if you want to certainly go look it up, but I changed it a little bit to, cause it says, was this your best work? Which is a little, was, it's a little form. But Greg, Greg is never in a suit. He's never wearing a jacket. It's not happening. If they ask me to, it's still not happening. I'm from Wyoming. I'm just not wearing the jacket. It's not going to happen. <laughs> um, and so I had to change a little bit because was this your best work is a little more formal. Mm -hmm. What I did is I changed it and I put it right by my bed. And I, I invite you to do this. I invite anyone hearing this because you know what you need to do to change your life. You know it, mm -hmm. whether it's in personal, whether it's in business, whether it's in vitality and whether it's in community, wherever it is, you know what it is. So here's what I did. It's just a little simple sign that I have right by my bed and it says, 
did you do the work? Mm -hmm. Did you do the work? And it's, it's crazy what those little tiny reminders will do. If you're going to bed, maybe a little too early, you're going to get up and you're going to go do something that pushes you forward. But it also sets yourself up really well when you wake up and you see that, did you do the work? And you're starting your day. You're going to go, okay, cool. I want to make sure I don't lay my head down on this pillow and I look at that and no, I didn't. Hmm. And I think that that's a big thing is like, if, if you want a better business, do better business. If you want have more interesting conversations, read more books. If you want to know more, like have more conversation, whatever it is, you know, you know what you need to do. Right. Did you do it? Like a lot of people, like for instance, if I don't go to the gym and I eat wingers every day, I'm going to go back to looking like I did two years ago. I don't want to look like that. I don't want to be that great. So I knew that if I'm going to enjoy some wings, I'm also going to enjoy a late night workout, which I don't enjoy. But kind of like, you know, we, so like we, we were talking, we were, we were at the gym the other day and I'm like, just so you know, I don't want to be here. This is pure discipline. Like it's, I, I had one of those moments this morning. So good. Because I got like two hours of sleep last night because I got a little baby. Yeah. And I was like, my alarm was set up. I committed and I decided to play pickleball today. Yeah. And that was my exercise for today. I was like, yeah. I decided yesterday I'm going to do it. So I'm going to do it. I didn't want to. But no. when I, when I, after like a half an hour of playing and exercising, I was like, okay, now I do want to be here. Yeah. But it took a while. Oh, that yeah. That first half an hour was straight discipline. Yep. Because yep. it was freezing cold outside and a little sketchy on the roads. And you think about it, sometimes uh, our habits dictate where we go in our in our life. Yeah. And there's some habits that I feel like I've really developed. It's, is starting to creep, and you have to make those adjustments. Yeah. How do you close? The and gap? that's why you have a coach. Is yeah. sometimes we don't even notice we're off, off kilter. Yeah. Because it might just be like a little, like a chiropractor, a slight little adjustment, like oh, like. I can move my wrist again, or I can yeah. move my neck. And often we get we get stuck in in our habit and the difference between a habit and a rut. You remember yeah. we talking about? Oh, yeah. I think we talked about that yeah. the other day. But the difference between a habit and a rut is: is this a positive thing? Is this helping you move towards your goal, or are you just going in circles? Yeah, yeah. And and I think that that's the the thing about you know community is is being able to have conversations like this because and that's why it's it's great having having. You know, people like you in my life is because we didn't have to have like a like there was no questions sent to him ahead of time. It was literally like this is the same kind of conversation that we have like when we're driving around in the car. Yeah. Uh, and 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 that's those when are, you're wearing freezing cold shorts because it's like 32 <laughs> degrees outside, and we're like, are we gonna shower? Now nah, we're just gonna. Go. Yeah. in there so it was it was and I mean it was like 16 degrees outside <laughs> and and uh and so we just called it a bonding moment yeah <laughs> yeah but you know that that's what it's that's what it's all about is is understanding that it's the community that support and then you know just being able to have people who are willing to raise their hand and say hey I can help in these areas and and that's that's such a, a precious gift that I think the world is forgetting because we live in the comparative reality. Yeah. Everyone thinks that they need to be perfect. They think that they need to not ask for help, but help is how you get better. Yeah. And so it's just like, if, if you guys are interested in, you know, how, how do you do Airbnb arbitrage? How many total properties do you have? So I, I have nine of my own and then I have one that I'm uh, doing full service property management. So that's good. So, so we've got 10 properties. So, you know, and then at, when did you start your real estate? You know, uh, September, 2019, I got my first one. It was actually one of my parents' properties. Okay. Like, Can I try this? I, you yeah. had that guy leave, leave, let me fix it up and try it. And like for about two, three grand, we put this one together, used, used furniture and got my first one going. And then what was interesting that very first year I made about 12,000 bucks. Huh. And the best they had done with that as a long-term rental was about six grand. So I almost doubled what oh, wow. they're, they're used to. And I was like, this is way easier. And we don't have bad tenants if you have someone that's a, a crappy person yeah. and staying in there and they were breaking house rules, you can evict them immediately. You don't have to go through a month or two process. Yeah. So I, I, I love it. So. Yeah. And 
So, so that's the thing, like, you know, I'll, I'll say even just with talking to, I've always been more of a buy and hold person. Yeah. But talking with you, I'm just like, maybe I need to like explore this. And that's the mm-hmm. thing. You've got to be open, have an open hand, open heart, open mind to where it's like, oh, maybe this could work. Or if I don't want to do it, he, he literally just said, oh, I do full service management on this thing. It's just like, yeah. okay, how do I partner with you and do stuff like that? Like, so if you're out there and you're wondering, you know, is real estate for me? I think that that's the biggest thing with, with real estate specifically is there's so many pathways in. Oh, they, like you could literally like private money, hard money, uh, you know, the, the setting up tax advantage things, velocity banking, you've got, uh, the, the wholesaling buy and hold. You've got fixed flip, commercial got development, oh commercial land acquisition, uh, the, the storage units, like literally anything it, that you can so imagine. There's so many things. And so I think a lot of people are like, when they say, Hey, I want to get into real estate. What happens is they do enough research to realize that saying, saying that you, you want to do real estate is a little bit like saying, I want to live in America. <laughs> okay. Like well, oh, where, yeah. uh, and what city and what size of house and what so it's you realize all these options and then it becomes daunting this is why the education is important Mm -hmm. and this is also why people like the human component are so much more important than i think people realize so then they can ask you questions and they can say hey i i want to rent a few you know apartments and airbnb how the heck do you do that let me show you yeah let's let's rock and roll like you got to get in touch with people and ask the questions because you're literally over here like, guys, like I'm here to help. Here to help. I'm here, here to, to help, help wherever. All the time. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and that, that's, that's, that's also true. Like, it, like who else do you know that like, can, you know, sing and entertain, knows Spanish and Mandarin and, and, uh, English and the, the language of real estate and the language of being an awesome dad and a, a man of faith. Like there's just so many things like, people like you are needed and necessary in the world and it's it's funny because people people won't you know tap you Mm -hmm. to say hey can i help and you know i'll i'll end here and then we'll we'll do kind of our closing thoughts but i think it it happens you know i'm not going to say where it is because i would definitely put some people on blast if i said where this happens specifically but i asked this group of people how come I don't get invited to the uh, the, the the guys trips? Yeah. I say, hey, God, like I want to hang out, and they said, Craig, you're a little you're a little too much like a Boy Scout. And I went, what do you mean? You know what I mean? I'm like, uh, yeah, no, no don't I, invite I me. I don't want to go. Either. Don't invite me. <laughs> So we have to understand that when we when we meet people who have these high standards and are principled and they have values and they are servant leaders, they want to help. You also have to understand that those people become those people because they have standards. Yeah. And so a lot of people won't reach out to people like myself or people like you because they know not that they're going to get judged mm. they know that they that certain behavior is not acceptable and remember we already know what we need to to do to to accomplish what we need here's the the the, the other side of that coin we know what we need to stop yeah a lot of people and so hanging out with people like me people like yourself you know that there's certain behaviors that you cannot do around us like for, for me, like, none of my friends have ever once, not someone that I know back from my music career, no one has ever invited me to a strip club because they know that that's it's not, it's, it's not, it's not even a, a possibility. Like, you couldn't say, hey, Greg, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you $5 million. We're going to go out to the strip club for, I, I don't, I don't, I don't need to go. That's just the, the, the damage that that does to my brain and my soul in my like in in the way that i view the world it is way more than five million dollars to change your standards that's the only thing that's going to change your life like Mm -hmm. did i want to work out until midnight last night no i wanted to I, i go to bed at like i'm asleep by like 11. so me still at the gym an hour after normally i go to bed 
that's tough. But I have standards, so if I ate that, I gotta get my workout in. It just is what it is. I don't. I'm. I gotta make the sacrifice. And so, understand that you're gonna have to develop new standards. You're gonna have to develop a new standard of of doing the work, of stopping certain habits, of of getting or like you said, I need yeah. new friends. I think that's so yeah. powerful. So you know, some of your closing thoughts, different ideas, how people can reach you. Just you know. I'll let you have the floor and, and take us out. Absolutely. Now, you, you brought up standards, and I absolutely agree. In, in Mandarin, that's biaojun. Mm. There is this idea of here's the bar, and then if we raise our expectations to say, this is what I will do no matter what, yeah. and then we say that's our minimum, that standard is what's going to push us to our limits, what's going to yeah. give us that opportunity to live the exponential life you talk about. Yeah. And I, I love that, that resonates with me. Thank mm -hmm. you for sharing that. Yeah. Um, when, when it comes to, to finding your tribe, to finding the people that you connect with, that you love, that you, you appreciate, I am so grateful I found Final Percent. So grateful I found Renatus. They, yeah. they have been bridges for me to, to see what's possible in my life. Yeah. And guys, I'm just, I'm just starting on this journey. I got 10 rentals, like, just, I'm just getting started. Oh, oh, yeah. oh my goodness, I, it's gonna get so oh, amazing. Yeah. And I'm so thankful because one of the things that, that has been impactful for me the, from literally the very first time I met Greg in Costa Rica was his willingness to say, you know what, we're going to be friends. what the power of one relationship can yeah. do to impact your life and I, I have forever been changed because of my relationship with Greg and yeah. because of the, the things I've learned and I am learning and the things that I'm, I'm becoming because of uh, this power that comes from being next to each other. Yeah, exactly. That and exponential relationship. You know? It is. And we, we have a connection that, that I'm just so thankful for. When, yeah. when it comes to people I'm grateful for, like I'm so thankful for my wife. Yeah. The, the willingness that she has. Belinda has, has been so patient with me in this whole journey. Is everyone start with a B in your house? Everyone. <laughs> you have to plan things, Greg. This is part of it. Everyone starts with a B. I Bring them back up. Every single one. I love it so much. Uh, all, my, all my siblings, <laughs> except for Emily, are like that too. That's, Do you guys ever like say all of them and then go, and Emily. And Emily, yeah. You have to. That's how it goes. But when when I dive into to personal development development and growth, like I, I think of Greg all the time because I, I mean I'm, I've been going through your courses. Yeah. I I don't just go through them once and I say, Oh well that was nice, I'm I'm done. No, he's the real I, deal. I literally I I utilize the things I've learned in that and I because I do these these calls with a lot of the other team members and uh, in Renatus, I, I feel like I, I have Gregisms pop in my head all the time, <laughs> and sometimes I, I throw out some random singing because of it, because it. of that. And I'm just so grateful for uh, good people that have like standards that yeah. I I want to emulate. Because when you have someone that you you love, you trust, you like, uh, you you want to emulate them. Yeah. And I I don't want to emulate people that. I don't want to be like, and yeah. I do want to be like you. Yeah. And what's cool is in, in our community with TFP, we have so many great models yeah, that's of, true. of what is possible in, in life. Yeah. And for me, like the, the way you get, get to connect with me guys, I, I, I love helping people un, unmask what's possible with, with language. Yeah. Uh, I share ideas every once in a while in our, uh, in our Facebook group with things. I'm like, man, I just discovered this. I want to share it with you. Yeah. We should, we I should have like a, a, we should have Brigham have like his own, own time in the thing, like go live and like, be like, Hey, give us a word. Yeah. Cause I'll tell you, that's one thing. I call them my buzzwords. I, I, I think I've shared that with me. I'll tell you there's <laughs> so many times I have just absolutely butchered every like Chinese thing you've said because I, I try like, and my brain moves so fast. A lot of times it will, I always say like, cause so many people ask me like, Greg, how did you become such a good speaker? I said, I'm not actually a good speaker. Just to be very clear. I just, I have a weird capacity to open up and just let God, I'm a conduit. God, God will literally. <laughs> and so here's the thing. Sometimes Greg gets excited 
um, because like I'm, I'm, I'm channeling like stuff that like I truly feel that God is giving me. And uh, then Greg will get excited, he'll get in the way, and he'll remember something that, that, that Brigham said. And I'll be like, let me talk to you about like this bull thing. And in Chinese, it's like, I don't know what it says, but don't even worry. <laughs> and so now there's going to be like this other one with uh, the hair. I'm going to be like, and this is Misogi Shikamada. And then I'll, like, <laughs> and I realize I'm like, and, and I'm making a fool of myself. But the words are already out before I realize what's happening. So I can't wait to hang out <laughs> around the buzzwords more to where I can say them appropriately. I love so that. So we'll, we'll, ha- we'll definitely got to do the, the hair thing. I want that. Oh, the, for sure. uh, the elephant, I want that, and then the uh, um, the what's the 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 bull one? The oh, jinchu. Jinchu. Yeah, kintsugi is a lot of times the way people will think. Okay, about it. yeah, it's a so, Japanese version. So of it. yeah, so none of the words I said, <laughs> said <laughs> but but jinchu, that's why yeah. like you gotta have the reps and get around the people because, and that's what I'm talking about. Like I don't believe in the the guru stuff. There's parts of his life that you know I've been down. Mm-hmm. And I can help him with, but I don't know if you heard. He has four kids. Four. Welcome I, to Utah. I've got, <laughs> <laughs> I've got one. I have one, so I know I now have a really, really great friend where I can be like, "Dude, what do I do? I don't understand what's happening." And and he's just gonna pat me on the head, and be like, "There, there, little Padawan. I've got It'll you." Come. Yeah. But that's 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 what I'm talking about. We're yeah. stronger together. Absolutely. You know? And th- thank you again for having me on this podcast. I I have set this up with StayBnB.com as my, my company, yeah. and it is something I, I'm always trying to add value any anytime I can with yeah. with short-term rentals and with, with TFP community, anything that I can. And in that StayBnB.com uh, website that I have, that's yeah. where I have all my listings right now. So good, okay. But um, I have a Facebook group that I'll, you know, we'll even put this podcast in there. Perfect. And we'll have, uh, as often as I can, I, I try and make sure that every single time that I, I show up, that I'm contributing to a conversation. Yeah. I'm contributing to uh, to be a thought leader. Yeah. Because for me, it's it's not enough to just have something that is positive and impacting for me yeah. or for just my family. I, I feel like the more we can share great ideas yeah. and we can keep each other accountable for lifting our standards yeah. and say, hey, you know what? I don't have to be 50% better tomorrow. I just want to get that 1% better. Yeah. I want to layer line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, do all that we can to to be better. Yeah. That's why we do these things. I, I'm putting together a podcast called Leveling Up. I've done three episodes so far. Ah, Brand so new. Good. So but, good. Man, this is so much fun, and I love connecting with you on this. And uh, one of the things that I, I'm going to consistently do is do interviews like this because yeah. you've inspired me. I've taken this podcast course. If you haven't done that, you can check it out. Oh, thank but you. Um, it's so true. When we are willing to say, you know what, I don't have to be the expert yeah. to be a shared expert. Yeah. You are an expert in so many different parts of your life. And you have things that are valuable that that you can share. You've got experiences that are I know are still within you oh, yeah. that you haven't been able to share with the world yet. That's and true. I know I have sh- experiences in my world mm-hmm. that I haven't been able to share with anyone outside of my family yet. Yeah. And if we are willing to do the work, yeah. literally do the work to say, you know what, this is a impactful experience. This yeah. is a story that is not only worth worth its weight in gold but it could exponentially change somebody else's life it's 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 our moral obligation to share those stories yeah. to create those bridges for people exactly. and to help them be equipped to take their next steps yeah and we'll make a positive impact and, and listen to the word that he just used i say this all the time and i get in trouble like i'm just me i like i'm not always the most pc person and you know people learn that about me but mm-hmm. you know i tell people all the time because i'm a coach I tell people I am not a counselor. Yeah. <laughs> I counsel and console are to basically make wherever you're at okay. I'm not okay with where you're at. Yeah. And so when people come and they try to give me the like, the therapy and they they try to say, oh well, I want to let me let me tell you what happened to me when I was younger in this trauma. I'm like, I'm not a I am not equipped to help you with that. I don't want to help you with that. I want to equip you to move forward in your life. I want to give you the tools. So he just used the word equip. So be very, very, very cognizant of how you are moving through your life Mm. on whether you're looking for consoling or counseling 
Or are you actually trying to get equipped? Because equipping means you're probably going to have to do the work. You're going to have to add some tools into the toolkit. You're going to have to do things differently. And it's always pay attention to are you equipping or consoling? Consoling is the land of excuses. Counseling, that's a completely different. Now, there's real traumas that need to get dealt with and, and they need to get put into that bucket. But when you hire a coach, they're coaching you through and to the next level. They are not there to make something make sense to you that happened 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. So you have to, like, I always tell people that when you get historical and you, you start bringing up the past and you do this, history is like gravity. Mm -hmm. It's pulling you back. Every single time you talk about your brother, those, there, there's a motion there and it's going to pull you and you've got to be strong enough to escape the gravity of that emotion. And every time people are getting, yeah, but this didn't work. Yeah, but this happened to me. Yeah, but my parents used to beat me. Yeah, but I, this, yeah, but yeah, but yeah, but yeah, but do that's what people, that, that's, I'm telling you, that's what people yeah. do. But if you say, Hey, like, look, this is why my model explore, identify, implement. Hmm. We explore on what things are working, what aren't working, how we're going to do this, adjustments. We identify a bunch of things, then we implement it, then we just go back to explore. We just keep doing that until our life gets better. But paying attention to that, I want to equip people. And I watch you do it. Like In, in fact, we, we were in a coaching session two days ago, mm -hmm. and I say, you need to learn how to say no more often. Yeah, That's the big, the big thing I was like, Dude, you say yet yeah, like yes to too many things. Like literally, if you like, he might as well just answer his phone. Yes. Like, I didn't ask anything. Oh, you're gonna ask something, and I'm gonna say yes. So I just figured I'd start. We, I, I was like, I need you to be a little bit more territorial of your time, your energy, your family, and let's build you. Let's build your empire. Mm. And and there's nothing wrong with that because remember, when the plane's going down, they say put your mask on. all the other people and I used to do the same thing I'd be in other people's businesses and speaking on other people's stages and and pushing other people's products and doing all of this stuff and then I finally just said I gotta focus on the final percent and I've been able to do far bigger things make a way bigger impact and create stability for my family and become someone who can enter other companies as a partner and not a subordinate so you gotta you gotta remember don't forget about yourself build yourself up and, and take take advantage of that and that's what I've always loved because you're always trying to equip people and that's why I'm so excited like when we get to property 33 when we get just so you guys know I'm a, a weirdo about 33 and and just so <laughs> everyone knows like like the there's two two things about where 33 came from I started doing a course when I was 33. And I was going to lose some weight. And so I said, I want to be 33 and jiggle free. 33 and jiggle free. I like <laughs> and, where, wh and why 33 is so important to me is because it was Jesus' age. That's, mm. and, that's, and that's where it's at. I think there's so much power in this. And it shows up all over the place for me. And so when he was just like, man, I, I want to I wanna make X, Y, or Z. I'm like, 333,000. That's what we're making this year. Yeah. And he's like, I like Let's that number. It. I like that number more than mine. <laughs> And we're going to get to our 33rd property. We're going to help our 33rd person. And then we're just going to do it again. And instead of yeah. we're going to do it in a year, we're going to do it in a month next time, maybe a quarter, whatever we want to do. But you got to have those standards so that you can you can go there. And I think that that's, yeah. that's one thing that I love watching you work and how you roll through life is anytime stuff gets thrown at you or a, like you're like, I want to make this. And then I just like double your goal. Instead of you immediately giving me all the excuses, you're like, all right, let's do it. I like that one, but that's a better number anyway. That's a better number, yeah. And those are the people you want to be around. I, I tell people all the time, I don't want to have to talk you into your future. No. I don't have to do it with this guy. Like, he's a coach, too. Like, he helps so many people, too. And so we already speak so much of the mm -hmm. same language. And so that's, that's the power. We're, we're in innovative thought and collaborative thought mm. instead of competitive thought like i don't compete That's with this huge. guy at all like we, we just go how can we go make a bigger impact it, i think the difference with a lot of people is 
if we can use it musical terms, there's dissonance with, with yeah. certain people, yeah. and then there's harmony. Yeah. We are singing different notes. That's, However, yeah. it is harmonious. Oh, and 100%. When, yeah. when you're willing to say, you know what? You're the best at what you do, period. Yeah. And then I'm the best at what I do, period. And we both are the best at what we do. There, there is room for every single one of us to live yeah. that exponential life and to be the very best versions Amen. of ourselves. I, I always tell people, you know, I look at, you know, going to the music thing. Like, any instrument by itself is cool. Yeah. It's never as cool as a band. Mm. Like, cool, like, sure, I'm a singer, but I'm not really cool, nearly as cool without, like, a great lead guitarist or mm. a great piano player or a great drummer. That drummer's pretty cool, but they're not cool without a singer. That piano player, they, they, do, they do their own thing, but, man, it's, it's the the sum is great, greater than the parts, right? Mm -hmm. And so like, when you find those exponential relationships and people that you wanna be better around, like I know Kayla does this for me too. Me being married to that woman makes me absolutely a better man. Like yeah. I, wanna, I wanna show her that, that I am worthy of her love every single day. Like I wanna, I wanna make sure that she knows that I'm never gonna take that for granted. Cause I mean, she's my best friend and she's the coolest person I've ever met in my life. Mm -hmm. With Conrad at a, a close second, because that kid, I mean, he's special. He's but cool dude. It's just, it's those moments where it's like, I know that in this relationship, I'm a better human being because this person's in my life. And I can absolutely say that same thing about you. Like, yeah. I, I know it, like, our conversations and, you know, everything from the, 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 the tears to the fears to the exciting to the journeys. I mean, we've already been to two, two separate co co countries together. Yeah. Three if you they count, count the US. US yeah. This is a good country. Yeah, this we'll, is a good we'll country. It. I like it. You know, I just remembered, you, you asked me a question earlier. I didn't get to deliver on this. Yeah. So I want to make sure we, yes. we give it to them. Yeah. Uh, one of the ideas we were talking about yesterday that I think is so helpful to equip people with just one more tool that you can use to, to make sure you're in control of your mind. Imagine, if you will, your mind is a stage. Oh, this is yes, great for yes. me because I'm, an, I'm a theater guy. Right? So Top good. Theater. I love this. This is so good. Imagine your, your, your mind is a stage, and because you are uh, in control of your mind, you get to choose which actors show up on your stage. Mm -hmm. If you have a bad actor hop on your stage, you get that crook and you pull them off. Mm -hmm. right? And crook, I'm, I'm talking about the vaudeville style hook. Yeah. Right? Like, I'm not the, talking about the, like a bad yeah. Like the uh, Apollo. <laughs> Yeah, like, oh, get, okay, I'm going. Yeah, get, yeah, I'm gone. You yeah. get you get those guys off because if you fill your mind with so much good, yeah. there's no reason that you can't have a great performance. Exactly right. And that's kind of what you were doing with your example of going to Barnes & Noble and reading and, yeah. and doing the personal growth. You're doing the work consistently, day in, day out. I was talking with Gunther. He, I've been doing a little value exchange with him. He's yeah. a great coach. I'm so glad that you brought him in. this. He's amazing. He's a stud. Yeah. Now, uh, he's like, if you really fill your, uh, your, your stomach, your mind with positive good things. He's, we're talking about building protein because right, mm -hmm. that's where I'm at right now. Yeah. I need to just improve my protein intake. Yeah. He's like, if you do that first, you focus on getting full off of what's good, you, have, you don't have any room for the bad. Yeah. What if we did that in our life? If, yeah, we, so if we fill our life with the, with the positive energy, the things that we need to to progress and to say, is this helping me get closer to my goal or farther away? Yeah. Really, it can be that simple. We're doing the work. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, and that's why, like, if you look around, like, I've got protein bars sitting up there. I've beef, got jerky beef, good, yeah. beef jerky on Beef jerky on there. I brought stuff. all my own food, <laughs> like, prepackaged. Because I know that if left to my own devices, I'm, I'll go to the store, I'll get chips, and I'll get a candy bar. And Oreos. And, and, and talk, Oreos have, have happened in the past, <laughs> for sure. But that's the thing. I, I You have to... One of the things that I really think that people need to get better at is controlling their environment. Control the controllables. Yeah. Exactly. But the thing that, the thing, people are controlling it the opposite way. They, if they know that this person is going to be a change agent in their life, and they know that this person is going to have a different standard, and they know that this person is going to, you know, move them into the uncomfortable, they, what they do, they tend to do is they say, okay, I don't want, I don't want that person in my life. I want to control the people that help me maintain homeostasis. And mm -hmm. if you want a different life, you're going to have to make different decisions. You're going to have to have different people in your life, and then you're going to have to do the work. But control your environment. And right now, if you're controlling your environment to stay the same, don't get mad that you're the same. 
Like you controlled yeah. your environment to to keep that body, to keep those friends, to keep that the finances. And you know, some people are so addicted to screen time and so addicted to TV. Like you need to throw mm-hmm. away your TV, like for a year. Yeah. Like. And I promise you, I promise you this is true. If you throw away, if this is you and you you always find the new show to binge on Netflix, if you throw away your TV, I promise you, you are going to have enough money at the end of that year to buy multiple TVs that are way better than whatever you threw away. Because <laughs> you're going to realize, what would you be doing? Ask yourself that. Mm. If you didn't, if you weren't on Infinite Scroll and you didn't have TV, what would you be doing? Well, you'd be doing the work. Yeah. Like you're not just going to cuz humans aren't just going to sit on the on the couch and just stare at the wall. But if you weren't infinite scrolling and you weren't just constantly needing to get stimulated in your eye sockets, what would you be doing? Well, are you mm. strong enough to go do that? If the answer is no, control your environment. And I know that this it's sucks. Like, oh, I feel it. <laughs> just throw away the TV. Yeah. Throw it away. Go get a flip phone for Three months. Wow. Like if you if you want to control your 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 environment, do it. Like I have a remarkable. One of the best things about a remarkable is there is no notifications. I can't take a picture with this thing. There's no text messages. There's no notifications. Hey, this per- there's no email. I do this weird thing called write and take notes on it, and it can connect to Google and upload to Google and its app and upload to its app to where it's saved and if I don't happen to have it, I still have my notes. That's it. It doesn't go this way to where it's like, oh, Kayla just sent you something. No, I don't have that. Because I need focused work. People have lost focus. Mm. They don't know how to, to have focus. And and this is another thing is don't don't keep the year long timetable. I think New Year's declarations ruin people's lives. Because Anything worth having is going to take longer than a year. Yeah. Like how long have you been married to your wife? I've been married 12, almost 13 years. Almost 13 years. Do you love her more now than you did a year in? Absolutely. Like, and it's not even close. It's not even like, yeah. It's not even kind of close. And you thought you loved her a ton then. Right. But it got exponentially more because you have tenure, you have mm. time, you have memories. And so we have to remember that anything worth having is going to be longer than a year. So set your goals to say, hey, you know, I want to make a million dollars. And if you really don't see a pathway in a year, it's okay to make it a two-year goal. What if you had a three-year goal? What if you had a 3.3-year goal? You know, that's me being weird. A 33.3-year <laughs> goal. <laughs> yeah, who has a 33.3-year goal? This is what I'm talking about. You, you've got to have those timelines, but most of you guys need to compress these things because you need the dopamine hit that lets you know that you're quote unquote winning. You, you need to know, oh, I won the day. Okay, good for you, now do it again tomorrow. And then 400 days into the thing, check this. So if you think that the final percent is a get rich quick, if you think Renatus is a get rich quick, it's not. It's it's a get it's a get rich efficiently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you do the work. And everyone's timeline is going to be different, different because Absolutely. like you came in very well equipped into Renatus, yeah. right? And I came in from a teacher's salary and a teacher's background. Sometimes we have to do some unpacking before we can pack what we do want. Exactly you, right. You think about going on an expedition. Dude, what, you hold are, on, hold on. Listen to what he just said. Sometimes you have, you to, have do to do some, do some unpacking, unpacking before you equip yourself correctly. Before you pack what you do want. Yeah. You have to unpack before you pa- That's powerful. How many times, like, think <laughs> that. When you're going on a trip, you grab your suitcase, you open it up, and you forgot to unpack from your last trip. You don't just take that stuff. No. You gotta unpack and go, okay, cool. Especially if I'm finding something, now I have a kid. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna pack a little differently. Mm-hmm. That's, that's the takeaway. I'm, I'm going to cut that and I'm going to put that on like a TikTok it. or something because people, sometimes you have to do mm. some unpacking before you can pack appropriately. That's Absolutely. powerful. Oh my goodness, that's powerful. I love that. That was worth the hour and a half was. journey to get <laughs> to that. And this is what I'm talking about. Like so many people look at me as like the guru. I learned so much from everyone. Mm. And so, there's no such thing as a guru. I don't believe in them. 
Like I'm always I'm figuring stuff out all the time, and like you think so differently that like I'm always learning from you just the same, man. So it's definitely a love it. Thank you. That's so good. And that's something I I really appreciate about, appreciate about you is you're you're not done. No, I'm never. You gonna be done. are getting it done. Yeah. And we're I, working on it. And, and we're I working think going the final percent, like a lot of people think, oh, the final percent's about perfection. No, the final percent's about just giving everything you have. Sometimes if all you have left in the tank is 40% and you give your 40% that day, that's the final percent. It just means don't leave anything on the table. And then yeah. here's the news flash: Going the final percent. Every time I've reached that, all it does is unlock another level where I'm starting back at the first percent. Mm. So there's... There's no such thing as like done. And and I, I don't I, I love the phrase be content with what you have but never with who you are. I like that. Because I, I wanna always learn and and someone always has something to teach me. And so I think that that's a a powerful a powerful tool. And you know, man, even taking it even further, and I, and I promise I really am done now. I just thought of something. I had said that the happiness cup only gets so full and the pleasure cup only gets so full because it's like a cup. It just starts overflowing. You can only get so much. Maybe sometimes you have to pour out what used to make you happy so that you can put the new stuff in that's going to make you the new happy. So there's a lot of people, you already have a full cup. This is the environment that you're trying to keep the same so that you don't get into uncover. You got to pour that out. So yeah, taking the TV to the dumpster, that might, that might be pouring out some of your happiness. You're pouring out the Netflix. That just, I gotta, I gotta share something. Oh, please, please. So I had a, I'm going to just say a family member that got sick because she had one container that she always drank her water out of. And for like a week, she forgot to wash it. What happens if you don't wash the inside of the container? You don't notice it. That's good. But she actually had no idea what was making her sick. She's like, what is going on? Why am I getting sick? And when she came and she noticed it, she's like, oh, there's some, there's some mold in this. Sometimes we have to clean the inner vessel. We have to notice that, oh, you know what? So Our good. cup is full, but is it clean? Do we have to actually pour out everything that we have, I clean the inside? I love that. And then we can actually fill it with things that, that we want. You know, Jesus talks about cleaning the inner vessel. He talks about that, but yeah. sometimes we have a container that's uh, not going to be able to contain what we our new joy is. Yeah. We might have to have new bottles. Yeah. So I love that. So not only are. unpacking, but also cleansing. Mm-hmm. That's that's, and that's the thing. And and I think that comes down to like, there's a lot of you out there who think that you're starting too late. You, you think like, my mom joined Renata since, and she's seventy. Like that's awesome. Yeah. There's people out here right now who are 25 and they're like, I think I, I, I can't do Renata because I, I, really? I missed the boat. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> it's not a thing. It's And so just just know that you, you really just need to start. But yeah. like starting is the second most important thing that you can do. Yeah. The first most important thing is finishing. Yeah. And, and that's the thing that trips us up because... In, in our linear thinking, it's out of order. But a lot of people start a lot of things, but they don't finish anything. So finishing is the first most important thing. Starting is the second most important thing. And I know that a lot of people are going to argue with me on chicken or the egg and all of that stuff on what needs to come first because you can't finish if you don't start. I get it. But a lot of people, I've seen way more people start than I've seen finish. So you have to make it the most important thing. And that's why you have to... to Make up your mind. Pickleball is a great example. I said I was going to do it. I committed to do it. I got two hours of sleep. I have a newborn. I did it. I did the work. Yeah. So I think that that's uh, something that's powerful. And then do the work in the relationships. It's not just all about business. Mm-hmm. Do the rela- work in your marriage, the work with you, the work in your community, the work in your church, the work in your health, and the work in your business. Realistically, and I know a lot of people, again, are going to, I used to be all about the business and the money and the this, that, and the other. Business needs to be the last thing. You got get your health in check, get your family in check, get your community in check, and the business, your your wonderful, beautiful, great business that produces a lot of money will be 
a byproduct because it's like it's literally you know personal plus your your health plus your community is going to equal your business so just just make sure that you're putting things in the right order because how you show up is is going to dictate what what happens in your business so so and that's true. and that's what I love about you. How you show up is just so fun. But like we'll have a we'll have a, a I'll I'll make him do like karaoke the next time uh, he's at my place because um, I think we're gonna do karaoke at this year's summit. Nice. And we'll make him do master of the house because he does yeah. all the voices and the character. <laughs> I was like, what? How? Like like real honest to god theater guy like at an incredible level. So. Thank we'll uh, we'll have some fun but thank you so much man Absolutely. i appreciate it it's a you. pleasure awesome